Today is a challenge build day. This challenge comes from Glitch King. He's asking me to make a Aberrant Mine Sorcerer Blaster. Pretty fun challenge, let's do it. So, starting off with the race, we are a gem dragonborn from the new Fizzband's Treasury of Dragons. First off, it fits the flavor. I do like that a lot, that we kind of have this psychic thing going and gem dragonborns are naturally psychic, so that's pretty cool. And we get more blast in early levels, especially by being a dragonborn with that breath weapon attack, it helps us be more of a blaster, which is exactly what we're going for. We also get concentrationless flying at level five, which is a big help for both blasting and just staying out of danger while blasting. We do get a new damage resistance and we do want to vary our damage a bit. A lot of the aberrant mind's blasts our psychic damage, which is very reliable damage, but just in case we want a secondary kind with our breath weapon attack. You have many different options outside of psychic. There's force, there's radiant, there's necrotic. I want something that's a fine line between not many enemies resist it and the resistance will be useful. Radiant is really good offensively because enemies don't really resist radiant, but defensively we also don't get attacked by radiant often. So trying to find a balance around there, I ended up choosing necrotic, but I think there's a lot of flexibility in that choice. As far as our meta magics, I think the one that really stands out to me is twin spell. As an aberrant mind blaster, a lot of our spells are single target spells, so twinning it is excellent. And on top of that, it also makes them have to do two saves. Almost all of our spells do damage and a secondary effect. So we can spread that secondary effect around and we can spread our damage around. Twin spell really stands out. I also took a heightened spell. This one I think is controversial and you could take whatever you wanted. The reason I took heightened spell is again, all of our damage spells are more often than not doing a secondary effect. And if the secondary effect is very important, a heighten can be a big deal in that moment. As far as our points go, I took 17 in Charisma, 14 in Dex, 16 in Con, and dumped the rest. This was with Point Buy. I took the Telekinetic Feet to bump up that 17 to 18 in our Charisma, as well as give us something to do with our bonus action, and again, further fit the flavor of being able to move things with our mind. Just really like it. Going for this, like, very psychic blaster thing. Starting out with this list that the Aberrant Mind gives us, we're going to start out by keeping our first level spells. Our first level spells gives us Dissonant Whispers, which is a blasting enchantment spell that also has the effect of making them use their reaction to run far away from us, which procs opportunity attacks from our allies or can just give us space. Pretty good. We also get Arms of Hadar. Arms of Hadar acts like a first level AoE blast, which is so rare. It does 2d6 damage in a 10 foot radius. It targets strength saving throws, which is an excellent save to target. And then if they fail that save, they also don't get reactions, which is a pretty minor effect overall, but it does act as a AOE blast at low levels. 2d6 isn't crazy, but at, again, at low levels, this isn't bad. At third level, we pick up calm emotions and detect thoughts. We do have a blasting spell we can swap in here, which is Mind Whip. And I'm going to take out calm emotions for Mind Whip because I want to keep detect thoughts. I do like how detect thoughts allows us to, without talking or anything subtle cast it, we can begin reading minds. I think that's a very strong ability to have. So I'm going to go ahead and keep it. At fifth level, we're going to remove sending for clairvoyance. Now, clairvoyance obviously is isn't a blast spell, but third level doesn't bring us any blast spells in the enchantment or divination uh, schools, so we're just taking information gathering spells, and I just prefer clairvoyance over sending. As far as utility, it's just really good to be able to look behind a wall and see what's waiting for you there, or to spy, you know, it's very versatile. However, I'm going to keep the Hunger of Hadar, which is a blast. Now, Hunger of Hadar, what it does is it basically does darkness, right? It's this 20 foot radius, pretty big area. While the, it also does, it's going to be difficult terrain in there, any creature that starts their turn in there is going to take 2d6 damage and then if they end their turn in there they're going to have to make a, a dexterity save or take 2d6 damage so it's not a huge blast we're at third level spells we're competing with fireball here and we're talking about 2d6 versus 8d6 so this isn't going to be our primary blast but it does mix a little bit of blasting with darkness and control there you go it, you can kind of control the battlefield as opposed to just blast so this is kind of a medium in between at seventh level we're going to keep both of the spells given to us we get everett's black's tentacles and summon aberration now summon aberration isn't directly a blast but it does help us increase our damage output by quite a bit and sorcerers don't often get summons so this is a big deal for us to have the versatility that summons bring, so we, we do want that. Everett's Black Tentacles is kind of similar to Hunger of Hadar, how it's combining a little bit of blast with a lot of control. Yeah, so it's going to do 3d6 bludgeoning damage if they fell, and then if they start their turn in it, they're going to take a little bit more bludgeoning damage and be restrained. Something to note about Everett's Black Tentacles is it's only a 20 foot square, so its area is actually pretty small. Surprising for a fourth level spell, and its damage is fairly low, but it's more about the restraint here to me. At ninth level, we're going to remove Telepathic Bond from Synaptic static, which is our 
premier spell here without talking without doing anything we can just do this aoe blast that also debuffs it does good damage it has a good effect and it's non-concentration synaptic static is absolutely freaking fantastic and what i consider the premier spell for this build we're also going to keep telekinesis i would keep telepathic bond over telekinesis if we were ritual casters but since we're not i'm going to pick up telekinesis i didn't use it for like those big baddies who don't have great strengths you know a wizard you know that i need to hold in place type idea so those are all our spells that come from the aberrant minds list itself but as far as the other spells we're taking during those levels in first level we have chromatic orb which is a pretty decent blast it's going to be nice during you know the early levels but once we start moving away from those first levels these slots will eventually be there for shield and mage armor as for our second level mind whip really is the standout spell here as far as blasts go but i will also grab an invisibility and misty step to help cover some of our defensive needs as well as mobility needs third level fireball is there we're going to take that and keep it that is going to be when we just need a blasters blast we, we can yeet out a fireball which is pretty fantastic i will also reserve some third level spell slots for counter spell keep counter spell on and handy as for fourth level the spells we get the everett's black tentacles and the summon aberration the, that's really the standout as far as blasting goes i'll use the other spells for my emergency buttons polymorph comes to mind hey we are losing this fight polymorph my ally into a giant Eight. Now we're not losing this fight. Emergency button. At fifth level, synaptic static really is king. I am not even going to mention anything else. Just use synaptic static a lot. It is the blasters, blasty, debuffing. It's just our core. Okay, so this has been my breakdown of what I would do as an aberrant mind blaster. But what would you do? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, I really like doing these challenge builds. If you guys want to give me more challenge builds, bring them on, baby. I want to do some more. Give them to me. Show me what you got. This has been a challenge character build, but we've done a whole bunch of character builds outside of this some really focused in on flavor where we tell their story and and go into their background things like that and there's some that are just kind of more mechanically focused like this one but you can find all of our character builds at this playlist now we are DD daily we release new DD content all the freaking time so if you love DD and you're not subscribed what are you doing tickle that button it's gonna bring you all sorts of DD content all the time you're missing out if you don't all right love you bye